Let's take a quick moment to discuss the concept of software monitoring and what this means. Well, to keep it quite simple, basically, this just means that you're using your DAW to monitor your audio signal, meaning that you're passing through your converters, then through the DAW, through any plugins that you have instantiated on the channel. So in this case, for instance, I happen to have a fat channel on the inserts. And then it's passing out of our DAW and through the digital to analog converters and eventually either arriving at the monitors or our headphones. So software monitoring in its most basic form is that you're listening through your computer and through your software. Now quickly, let's talk about hardware monitoring for a second. The concept of hardware monitoring essentially aimed to improve the round trip latency that can be incurred when you're using software monitoring. So the concept is quite simple, that instead of passing through the whole round trip of going through your DAW, it would bypass that whole round trip and essentially the input would be routed directly with your output and mixed back with anything that's being processed by your DAW. Now let's talk about native low latency monitoring that was introduced in Studio One 3.5 and above. Now the interesting thing about this concept is that the foundations of this concept are actually borrowed or rooted in the concept of hardware direct monitoring. Being that we have different paths that are merged together to improve the round trip latency. So when talking about Studio One software monitoring in this video, I'm going to be referring to native low latency monitoring because I think most people are already familiar with software monitoring in general. So let's have a look at our preferences over here. Now it's worth mentioning that for this video, I'm gonna be using the quantum, but the concepts that I'm talking about over here can be applied regardless of whether you're using a quantum, a quantum two, Studio 192 or Studio 192 mobile in software monitoring mode when using the native low latency monitoring option. So first off, I'm gonna kind of work backwards over here. We have two different tabs over here. Let's start off with the processing tab. Now the concept of the processing tab and this dropout protection, I wanna to try to keep this simple. So essentially think of dropout protection as your playback buffer. And then in the audio device tab, let's think of our device block size as our record buffer. Now it's a little more complicated than that, but let's just leave it at this for now. So for example, if we head to the processing tab, based on the dropout protection level that we set, mine's currently set to medium, you'll notice that the process block size is gonna change. So for example, I'm gonna set this now to high. You'll notice that we have a process block size of 1024. If I set it to medium, drops down to 512. If we go to low, we're at 128. So let's leave this right now at medium. And let's think of this as our process buffer. Now let's go to our audio device tab over here. And you can see here that I have my device block size set to 32. Now, based on the quantum, which is the interface that I'm using, this results in some incredibly low latency. So you can see the input latency over here is 0.83 milliseconds. The output latency is one millisecond. So that's very low for this particular interface. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about over here is in terms of how we engage our native low latency monitoring. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the outputs tab over here. Now, one thing you'll notice right away is that on our outputs, we have a little Z, which is present on both the main outs and also this channel over here, which is my line outs one and two, which I've custom named to HP4. That's because these are connected to a Personas HP4 headphone amplifier. Now, if we open up our IO setup, you'll notice that in the outputs tab over here, our main outs are now always designated as a QMix output as of 3.5 and above. So we will always see this little Z available when using native low latency monitoring. Now, if you enable any other outs as a QMix, so for example, if I was to enable line 3.4 as a QMix, click apply, you'll see that this has now brought this little Z available on line outs three and four as well. I'm gonna just deselect this for now. Let's just deal with these two channels for now. So I'm gonna click apply and okay. Now the concept here is very simple. All we have to do is let's go ahead and input or monitor enable this track as, as we, we normally, normally would. would. 
Now you can see that we have an input here. We've got a little bit of latency, and what I've done here is I've left the direct signal of my voiceover mic with the DAW output signal, so you can hear the latency that we have. Now the idea here, like I mentioned, quite simple. If we want to get rid of this latency or minimize this, all we have to do is go ahead and click this Z. Now when I click this Z, I'm literally left with a latency figure that is so low that it's pretty much imperceivable for me. I can't really hear any latency at all. Now, these outputs over here, you'll notice that I have a Qmix that's also set to send out for an external headphone source. If I wanted to enable native low latency monitoring for that output bus as well, I can simply click this Z. Now you'll notice we have this green Z for both. You'll also notice that the actual record monitors in terms of what we're seeing here has disappeared. And not to worry about this too much, that's simply because very similar to what's happening in the hardware world of hardware direct monitoring, this is now happening in Studio One. So this is all we have to do to enable our native low latency monitoring in Studio One 3.5 and above. Now, the great thing about this is we can monitor through plugins of our choice. So for example, I could take this plugin over here, add a little bit of top end. Maybe I wanna add a little bit of bottom end, not necessarily that my voice needs it, but regardless, I can go ahead now and I can make these adjustments and we're monitoring through plugins with an incredibly low round trip latency. So with respect to using native low latency monitoring in Studio One, this is all you really need to know. We open our audio preferences, go to our processing tab, we set a dropout protection level. Typically, medium is gonna work great. If you find you are getting some CPU errors, we can change this to high. Now, any tracks that are playing back, regardless of whether they're audio or virtual instruments, will be using this process block size of 1024, which is based on the dropout protection level that we have set. And then we set literally the lowest device block size that we can go. We'll set that on our interface, click apply and okay. And then the minute we click the green Z on any of our output buses that we're monitoring through, we will automatically engage native low latency monitoring. Mm -hmm.